Now, a little bit more communal. If there's any Irish people out there, that's together. Good evening! Right, now, if there's any of you out at the moment with somebody else's old woman, piss off. Because he's got a camera behind me that's going to fly around you and you could get yourself in, in trouble. Now, for those of you who've never seen me before, I tell stories about everybody. Englishmen, Irishmen, Scotsmen, Welshmen, and them. <laughs> you seen any? The trouble is, the bastards sit in the shadows and you can't find them. <laughs> the luck I've had, he might have had his teeth out. Where are you? Now, I never swear under any circumstances, I've got a catchphrase, the word is blinking hell. I've left off the blink and I call it kin hell. <laughs> now, you can please your f***ing self if you believe it or if you're f***ing done. We'll get rid of the Irish toys because I don't know how to set an embarks because they throw pins at you. <laughs> and if they do run, they've got an angle over their mouth now. <laughs> Here, this Irishman had a boil on his arse and stuck the plaster on a mirror. Now, this is true. I wouldn't tell him that. This colour fella. I thought I fucking saw one then. Got to be so careful because the bastards can throw a spear from 200 yards. <laughs> colour fella went to the doctors. He said, Doc, he said, I've got a bit of trouble with my chopper. He said, what's the matter? He said, well, it's permanently hard and will not go down. He said, it doesn't look very big. He said, I got it strapped to my leg. <laughs> he said, well, have a look at you. He drops his trousers. I'm done this belt on an ape's name. Can wallop up his car. <laughs> he said, see it? He said, see it? Look at the fucking size of that. He said, you've got more to piss with and I've got to walk with. Look at the size. <laughs> he said, but it's like that all the time and it will not go down. He said, do you want it soft? He said, yeah. He said, have you tried masturbation? He said, what do you mean, a J. Arthur? Yeah. I've had two or three of them, but it makes my arm ache right out there. <laughs> he said, hang on, so he got his little rubber hammer and he's hitting the helmet. Doing, doing. He said, that don't do it. I tried banging it against the wall and the wall fell over. <laughs> he said, this one's a shock. Are you going anywhere? He said, where can I go with a chopper like this? He said, right, meet me at Euston Station, platform 7, 7 o'clock. We'll get rid of that. So he's met in there, he said, right, I've got a reserve first class compartment. We'll get on a train, and when the train picks up a bit of speed, you get your dick out. I'll lower the window, because you won't be able to reach it. <laughs> you stick it out, and the cold air will... <laughs> you can look here. King train's doing King 90 mile an hour. He's opened the window, stick it out. He said, right, stick it out. <laughs> he said, it's soft. He said, not feel it's hard. Bring it back. He said, I would, but what do I do with all these mailbags? <laughs> Tell him to the doctors. He said, Doc, he said, you go help me. He said, my old woman lays in bed at night time. She thinks she's some sort of king racing driver. Brum, 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 down comes her hand, grabs hold of my John Thomas, Kim yanks it forward for first gear. Kim pulls it back for second, it's down now to pass my nuts for first. Look at the state of my job. He said, she's actually getting hold of the helmet and trying to push it in to get it in reverse. Look at the state of it. He said, when I've told her she's done it, she don't know she's getting done it. He said, this is a bad case, son. He said, next time she does it, before she gets her hand on it, whip her over in her stomach and from the rear, Kim Wallop, let her have it. He said, oh, Kim will and all. So he's laying in bed, he's got a touch of the salmon. <laughs> salmon and prawn, home. And. <laughs> vroom, 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 down come around, he's can flipped her over, can wallop, he's drove it straight home. She's looked up and said, four gallons, please. <laughs> so he's putting his young boy to bed one night, and he's putting him in the bed, and the little kid said, I've got to say my prayers, Dad. So he's gone then. Knelt down the side of the bed. God bless mummy. God bless daddy. God bless grandma. Tell our granddad. He thought, that's funny, the old man didn't tell me he was going away. So he's downstairs talking to his wife. He said, uh, is your father going away? He said, no, not to my knowledge. Why? He said, well, 
said, I heard the boy saying, tell her your granddad. So he said, nah, it must have been a mistake. And I got a phone call. I've asked five in the morning, the old man's died. He thought, can you know, that boy's got a premonition on getting dead. I had to keep an eye on him. Six weeks have gone by, he's putting the boy to bed every night. God bless mummy. God bless daddy. Tell our grandma. He thought, nah, he said, I can't be. I'm getting sore at a day, so getting healthy as anything. Coming around to visit him the following morning, getting knocked over, getting killed. He thought, you know, that boy's got a premonition on death. I'm definitely going to have to keep an eye on him. Twelve weeks went by. He's putting him in bed. God bless mummy. Tell our daddy. He thought, get know, I'm going. <laughs> he thought, I ain't going to bed, that bastard ain't going to catch me. <laughs> so he sat up and night. he thought, I ain't going to go to sleep, the bastard ain't going to get me. So he thought, I ain't going to work in my car, the bastard might knock me over. <laughs> so he's going to work all through getting back fences. And, 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 and he's sitting in work. <laughs> <laughs> so one of his mates said, what's the matter with you, Harry? Oh, he's getting feel horrible. He said, can go home and keep fighting all around here all day. <laughs> he said, do you mind? He said, no, I'm getting... <laughs> so he's gone back home all through getting fences. He's got in the back door, getting sweats pouring off of him. His old woman said, you all right? He said, oh, I said what a getting day I've had. She said, what a getting day you've had. I got up this morning, opened the front door, and there's a milkman dead on the doorstep. <laughs> Forget you, boss. It's up to you. It's a tit that, isn't it? <laughs> Trouble is, once you've got this bastard up to your mouth, you don't like letting it go, you know? <laughs> I do like getting pissed, do you two? It's the only way to go to bed, isn't it? Because when you get up in the morning, you know sometimes during the day you're going to feel better, don't you? <laughs> You're waving it around, love. Are you hot or is somebody farted over there? <laughs> and that's a funny thing about farting. You can never cover a fart with a cough, can you? You always sort of... <coughs> you can't time it, can you? And if you're lucky enough to let a... <sighs> don't they can stink them quite well. You know why, don't you? For the benefit of their death, that's why they can stink, you know? Have you tried farting in the bath? That's good fun. Just as you lower your ass in the water, it goes water bottle, water bottle, good fun, eh? <laughs> Don't do it if you've got a tin bath, though, because they can hear you downstairs. <laughs> Fella got on a bus, single decker bus, there's only one seat, right down the front by the driver. See next to the window was a nun. So he went in and sat next to this nun, and the bus is going along, and he sort of looked at the nun, and he done a double take, and he went, ah. He said, Excuse me, sister, he said, I don't mean to stare at you, he said, but you're beautiful. He said, you're a fucking nun and all. He said, what do you think of leaving the order to marry me? She said, I'm, I'm ever so sorry, my son. She said, I'm married to God. He said, sister, he said, I don't mean to be a fucking nuisance. He said, but... He said, I think you meet the one you're going to marry like that, and you're fucking her. He said... Would, would you just not even think about it? He said, I, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. He said, it's very, very flattering. She said, but I'm married to God. Excuse me. And with that, she got up and got off the bus. So the bus driver said, I couldn't help but get over here, you mush. <laughs> he said, you've got a fucking lovely line of power. <laughs> he said, you've made her excited. She's got fruity. She's had to get all the fucking bus, you know. <laughs> he said, do, do you know the church in the meadow? He said, yes, very well. He said, but if it's any help to you, he said, I reckon you could pull her. She goes down there every morning at six o'clock for morning prayers. He said, you get yourself down there and you could can chat her up. So he thought, I'll give it a try. So he got yourself a, a, a big white wig and a beard, give white cloak, Jesus sand. Quarter six, he's, he, he's standing behind a skin tree waiting. Well, you see this night, it's still dark. Nuns come walking across the meadow, so he jumped out from behind the tree. She went, Jesus. He said, that's right, my child. <laughs> he said, and you are married to me. He said, and I have come down to earth to consummate the marriage. 
Oh, she said, you picked the fucking wrong week. <laughs> so Jesus said, that's a fucking news, so I've got the horn there. <laughs> she said, well, I don't mind taking a bit out the back. Oh, he said, all right. So he turned around and then up against the street, King Wallop. He's given one up the back, hasn't he? But when he was finished, he felt horrible. He thought, King Nam, I've stuffed him down, a dirty bastard. <laughs> and he felt remorse, you know. And he, he, he said, Sister, he said, I've got a confession to make. He, he, he said, I'm not Jesus. He said, I'm that bloke on a fucking bus. <laughs> and the nun said, Well, I've got a confession as well. I'm not the nun, I'm the bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> 